Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Today we're going to talk about filling root canals with uh, silver cone. Now this uh, type of filling also requires two main steps, fitting the master silver cone and, and the actual filling with the silver cone, uh, just as the gutta percha filling had fill, uh, fitting the master gutta percha point and filling with uh, la bilateral condensation. Uh, in this tape, we'll only be talking about the actual fitting of the master silver cones. Since many of the steps uh, in this procedure are very similar to uh, fitting a master gutta percha cone, we'll stick uh, to mainly the differences. We'll try and emphasize those and go through the, uh, the similar points very quickly. Now let's go to uh, some graphics so I can show you uh, ideal features, I mean features of an ideally fitted uh, master silver cone. Here's a bicuspid tooth prepared to receive a uh, silver cone. As uh, you remember when I talked about the silver cone preparation, preparation is in sound dentin, you have a nice apical constriction, and the preparation hasn't been flared at all. So the uh, canal should be smooth and round and pretty much the same size as the last file that was used uh, in the tooth. Now with the uh, silver cones in place, you can see that the silver cones uh, obliterate pretty much the entire root canal space since they're pretty much the same shape and size of the uh, last file. Now the criteria for a properly fit silver cone are the same as for a properly fit gutta percha cone in that uh, it should go all the way to your working length or within a half a millimeter of the working length. It should get a little, a little closer than the gutta percha cone uh, since um, you can put a little bit more force in seating the uh, silver cone. The second uh, criteria is tugback. Now a silver cone has uh, considerably more tugback than a gutta percha cone because a uh, gutta percha cone was fitting only in the apical two to three millimeters. Silver cone fits throughout the entire length of the canal and you have uh, all that additional frictional retention. So to um, you have really quite firm tug back and you have to really pull on this to get it loose. Also you can seat a uh, silver cone quite a bit more firmly into the canal which is one of the advantages of a uh, silver cone and um, as a result that increases uh, tug back retention too. So you have length uh, tug back and once those two requirements are met you take a final uh, radiograph and if that looks proper uh, you're ready for your filling appointment. Just as with uh, the gutta percha fittings, I've, I've selected and disinfected my master silver cones by soaking and putting them in a petri dish with uh, zephyrin chloride for 20 minutes. Uh, while they've been soaking, I've set up, I've uh, taken the, um, put the patient in the chair, put the rubber dam on, taken all the dressing out of the tooth. Uh, I've made sure that the canal is dry, the tooth has been asymptomatic. Uh, the, I've put the last file, which was number 30, down to uh, proper length and made sure that the canals are open. So I'm ready to uh, take my silver cone, which I've dried off in the folds of the sterile cotton, I mean sterile towel kit, and I'll place it in one of the canals, just as we did with uh, the gutta percha. Now, you notice that I'm using a hemostat to do this instead of uh, cotton forceps. Since uh, the silver cone uh, has a little bit more tug back and you can f uh, put a little bit more force on it, I choose to use uh, these mosquito hemostats to seat silver cones. So anyway, I'll push it as far as it will go, rest, it, rinse, rest the uh, hemostat against my reference point, click it closed, and then pull it out. Now I'll um, check this against a file which I've already uh, set the length on. Now normally you'd, set, uh, you'd check this against the endodontic uh, packet, the recording of length that you have on the packet.
But since uh, that's very difficult to show without changing camera, uh, I just use the file right here, which has been set. As you can see, I'm, uh, my length is real good. I've already tried this in to make sure. Uh, if it was short, I would re-instrument the tooth just as I did in gutta percha. And if it was long, that might mean that I'd perforated and I would check with an instructor. But this is uh, certainly acceptable. So now all I have to do is just adjust the tug back. As you can see, I let me get it in the right canal. There we go. I'm in the lingual canal, and I'm seating it. Now, for uh, this amount of tug back would be acceptable for gutta percha, but for a silver cone, you want a little bit more. So I'll cut off the length, just as I did before, working very carefully, just taking a half a millimeter at a time, trying the tooth in, pushing down. Now you can see, just with that little bit that I've taken off, how much retention it takes to dislodge this. Make sure it won't go any farther. And I think I'll go for just a little bit more. That should do it then. Feed it all the way down firm pressure, but be careful not to bend the silver cone. These do bend, and then you have to go back and de disinfect one. Okay, now this has got real good tug back. Let me pull, and I can't get it loose. So I kind of use the other hand and pop it out. Now I'll check my length again, make sure I haven't lost any length. And I haven't. So I would go in. And then I would fit the other, put this one aside, fit the other canal with a silver cone and take my final radiograph. The final radiograph uh, will show the two uh, cones in place, or as many cones as you uh, have canals in the tooth. Um, and when that radiograph uh, verifies that this is at the proper length and the proper fit, I'm ready to fill. Here's the um, master cone x-ray. As you can see, both uh, silver cones have been fitted. Uh, in this case, they came out real well. They're just a half a millimeter short of the apex of the tooth. I know it's hard to see on the TV screen, but uh, there's the, uh, that's where the apex is, where the pointer is. And um, that's the lingual canal. The buckle uh, appears shorter on the x-ray, but they're both exactly uh, in the right position. Uh, when you see this kind of result, you want to uh, cut off your uh, silver points right at uh, your reference point so that you have a uh, positive uh, mark when you seat the points back in during your filling appointment. And now you're ready to fill the tooth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.